captured in words so show me colors colors i need pictures this time show me food inside some sounds i wanna know what you find i want colors colors please show me life ain't black and white let me see you on the other side of the line Show me colors, colors I need Pictures this time Show me food and sights and sounds I wanna know what you find I want colors, colors please Show me life ain't black and white Let me see you on the other side of the line Show me colors, ooh I will take a little trip over yonder, over yonder, so I can take a look around at what you've seen. I can see from where I am you're on an adventure in a place you can't describe. Some things can't be captured in words. So show me colors, colors I need. Pictures this time. Show me food and sights and sounds. I wanna know what you find. I want colors, colors, please show me life black and white let me see you on the other side of the line show me colors ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. show me colors ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. since you've been away the days grow longer days grow longer and I I can't wait to see your smiling face Even if it's just online It brings me something I can't define Some things can't be captured in words So show me colors, colors I need Pictures this time Show me food and sights and sounds I wanna know what you find I want colors, colors please show me life ain't black and white let me see you on the other side of the line swirling round and round in my head more than all the pages I've read dancing on the memories playing in my mind when I think about it I wonder what it would be like packing bags and wondering if I was by your side so show me colors colors I need pictures this time show me food and sights and sounds I wanna know what you find I want colors colors please show me life ain't black and see you on the other side of the line show me colors ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. show me colors ooh -hoo. I will take a little trip over yonder, over yonder, so I can take a look around at what you've seen. 
I can see from where I am you're on an adventure In a place you can't describe Some things can't be captured in words So show me colors, colors I need Pictures this time Show me food and sights and sounds I wanna know what you find I want colors, colors, please show me Life ain't black and white Let me see you on the other side of the line Show me colors, ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. Show me colors, ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. Since you've been away, the days grow longer Days grow longer and I I can't wait to see your smiling face Even if it's just online It brings me something I can't define Some things can't be captured in words So show me colors, colors I need Pictures this time Show me food and sights and sounds I wanna know what you find I want colors, colors please show me life ain't black and white let me see you on the other side of the line swirling round and round in my head more than all the pages I've read dancing on the memories playing in my mind when I think about it I wonder what it would be like packing bags and wondering if I was by your side so show me colors colors I need pictures this time show me food and sights and sounds I wanna know what you find I want colors colors please show me life ain't black and see you on the other side of the line show me colors ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. show me colors ooh We'll take a little trip over yonder, over yonder So I can take a look around at what you've seen I can see from where I am you're on an adventure In a place you can't describe Some things can't be captured in words So show me colors, colors I need pictures this time show me food and sights and sounds i wanna know what you find i want colors colors please show me life ain't black and white let me see you on the other side of the line show me colors ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. show me colors Ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. Since you've been away, the days grow longer, days grow longer, and I, I can't wait to see your smiling face. Even if it's just online, it brings me something I can't define. Some things can't be captured in words. So show me colors, colors I need. Pictures. This song has been stuck in my head for the past two weeks. Welcome to the 2020 Artwell Awards as we gather virtually to honor extraordinary leaders and celebrate Artwell's 20th anniversary. We are honored to have amazing artists and guests to pre present to you this evening. And we are so honored from the bottom of our hearts that all of you have gathered to join us. 
This journey continues to come alive in ways that have been truly beyond our wildest dreams. I want you to listen for a, just one glimpse in this potent poem written in one of the thousands of Artwell classrooms by Kavanaugh when she was in fifth grade at Cuba Institute for Arabic and Islamic Studies. Kavanaugh titles the, her poem, Harmony. Harmony is the song that the world's colors sing. Swirling together, they create the sweetest music. Their entrained voices go stronger in the winds. The sound barrier is destroyed as the light grows louder and louder. In the last 20 years, we have witnessed the power of revelations coming forth. When barriers are named and dissolved, sometimes. We've met many students who said they hated poetry. And then when invited to write about what's important to them, discover the power of their voices and can't stop writing. Supported by extraordinary teaching artists, thousands of students every year name the barriers, take risks, share their pain, listen to their peers, tap their innate creative brilliance, find their voice and sing their dreams. Of course, there's been a lot of challenges. We're deeply connected to our beloved city, our country and our world. And we all know we face right now daunting challenges. And amidst these challenges, we continue to witness the power of what happens when deep collaboration is infused with the power of our values, the power of imagination, of community, the possibility of healing, the imperative of social justice, the expansiveness of spirituality and the oxygen of love. And so right now we are full in our hearts and we say, thank you, thank you. Thank you to all the artists who have made this happen, starting with Marcy Francis and Jan Jeffries, who have been with us for 20 years, pumping up the love and our first artist in residence, Lynn Denton. We thank from the bottom of our hearts, program creators, the brilliant Kathy Cohen and brilliant Julia Terry, who joined all their work with ours and worked very hard to co-create with us an even greater organization. For all the extraordinary teaching artists and staff throughout these years who have worked tirelessly, I'm so honored and proud to be here with my amazing colleague, Brianna Clark, who leads our programs and behind the scenes, Marcos Reynaga, thank you. Thank you, Jessica Sepioni. Thank you, Dan Host. And for all our board leaders, now in the few, all the years and present who have created it and come together to support our well swirling energies being able to take form with strength and love. To the more, more than 400 partner schools and faith-based and community organizations that have opened their doors and their hearts. And to our students, this is, we're here because of you and you deserve all of our investment. None of this would have happened without the generosity of so many. So thank you to all of our sponsors and donors who have invested in the vision of communities and students coming together so their colors can swirl and sing and make the light grow louder and louder. We're sad that we can't be with you in person this year, um, but we're thankful we're able to share virtual space together, whether it be in your pajamas, um, whether you dressed up for the occasion, having a cocktail at home, at the dinner table, on the sofa, however you decided to show up to this virtual um, event, we thank you. Um, and also shout out for technology and the internet for allowing us, allowing this connection to be possible. Um, for those that are new to Artwell, we are a nonprofit organization whose model consists of teaching artists, community and school partners, and youth. We work primarily um, within Philadelphia schools. Our goal is not to teach or tell youth or adults how to be artists. 
um, but we create spaces and experience or experiences where individuals can discover and unlock their creative superpowers through visual art, poetry, music, dance, um, creatively express themselves and connect with others. Um, I think it's special that although we have created a lot of curricula for our programs, we leave flexibility um, to work collaboratively with our partners and um, our teachers and our teaching artists and students to customize workshops and experiences based on that, pers that site's personal needs. Um, this approach to starting, building and maintaining partnerships has been critical during COVID. Um, collaboration, communication, hope and trust in the process um, have been key and has enabled us to maintain our programs. We're actually in 20 classrooms right now um, we have a club and we also host um, a monthly town, school-wide town hall. And I think that's amazing considering um, the space that we're in right now. And it's very close to the amount of classrooms that we are in during, during a, a, normal, a normal time. Um, so yeah, I know 2020 has been crazy. Um, it's been challenging and it's okay to cry, to be frustrated, to feel defeated but also be gentle with yourself and remember to celebrate. And we're actually getting to celebrate today. Um, I feel like we've all become super humans and, gave, and gained so many skills and powers that we haven't, um, we didn't know we had before all of this. And I think there's beauty in that. The poem that Susan read from the fifth grader, um, she says that, uh, that intertwined voices grow stronger and stronger in the wind and that light grows louder. Our hope for the future art well is that we can grow louder and brighter and bring the magic that's happening within our classrooms um, further out into the Philadelphia neighborhoods and further into the world. Um, and we invite you to join us in the expansion of this journey. So before we get started uh, with the full show, we wanted to connect with you creatively and as a community. If you have the ability right now um, to comment on the live stream, I'm going to invite you to participate in this activity. Uh, it's something that we do when we're in a, some of our workshops uh, with youth and adults, a which are collaborative poems. Uh, this is an approach which is quick yet powerful. Yeah, so very quick, very powerful, and it's fun. So um, if you have the ability to go to the comments, open up your comments right now, this is how it works. Um, you're gonna get a two word sentence starter. Um, you're gonna finish the sentence and then type it in the comments. Um, later on, I'll come back and, and read them as if, it was a, as if it was a poem. So it's our 20th anniversary and we're reflecting on our journey and growth where we've been, where we are, where we're going. So our two word sentence starter is our journey, dot, dot, dot. Um, when we say our, um, I'm referring to your community, your family, friends, the world, um, just to clarify, not our as in like our world's journey. So our journey um, as a community. Um, so if you like to participate, um, we ask that you just finish that sentence in the comments. Um, I'll leave, read them um, when I come back in about five, like five minutes. Yeah. Thanks, Bree. We'll also post the poem after the event uh, for any of you who want to read or share it. We are so happy. Thank you again for being here with us and now enjoy some glimpses of our work in action. Happy 20th anniversary, Artwell. Happy 20 years. Happy 20th anniversary, Artwell. Happy 20th anniversary, Artwell. Everybody has art inside of them. And I feel like Artwell gives them that opportunity to pull that art, that artistic nature out of them. This program to me as a student meant so much. Like it helped me 
like with the basis of everything. Like when we did free write, it just brought in my ideas. I'm a girl growing each day. I'm a flower blossoming in night. I'm the water that flows in the stream. I'm the rainbow you see in your dream. When I bust a break dance move to make me feel happy, relaxed, and calm. Coach, you come from the heart, and y'all show them how to express your feelings. We aren't back just yet to read the poem, but we are ready for our first performance for the night. Um, I had the honor to film this first performance of Antumani, Marcy, Jan, also known as the Heartbeat Ensemble at Artwell. Um, we met at Clark Park a few weeks ago to film this. Not only was there joy in seeing them in person, because I hadn't seen them in months, but there was also um, a joy in them able to to bring joy, su surprise, a su surprise joy to, <laughs> sorry, surprise joy to the park, um, and people gather and and dance as they uh, perform. Um, two of the performers, Marcy and Jan, are also the creators of our Heartbeat program in our school, so we want to give a shout out to them and thank you. So get your shoulders, your toe taps, and your full body ready to to dance to some music. Hey, we just want you to know, thanks for supporting the arts. That's right, don't give up, because we're still here kicking it live for you. The children need one-on-one, -on -one. yes, that's like the adults. Communication is the key. Thanks for supporting the arts. I am so grateful to be a part of Art World and to be, to be a part of the creator of Art World, Susan and I. I am just so blessed that um, 
that we have such a beautiful organization to help to bring in joy and love and peace and harmony to everyone, especially the children. We love working with the children. And the communication is the drum, is music, and that is the healing medicine. And I say that shit. The art world artist, perform and dancer, and um, we are here out. Shout out to everybody during this pandemic. We are struggling, but we're gonna get there, and we are praying hard to everything become normal. Yes, art world, yes. Yeah. Thank you for everyone that participated in our collaborative poem. Um, and we have a poem just like that. So I'm gonna scroll through and read them in the order that they came in. Um, so this is our poem, it's called Our Journey. Our journey requires patience and seeing the possible. Our journey unfolds as we wend our way along the narrow path. Our journey includes hope and promise in our youth in the city. Our journey steps into the center of humanity, spiraling, cascading, connected. Our journey is full of challenges, but also joy and inspiration, and we navigate it together. Our journey has been full of amazing twists and turns. Our journey happens step by step, smile by smile, breath by breath, mile by mile. Our journey is what we make it. Our journey requires love and empathy. Our journey begins in the pink, blue, black, brown, yellow, red, white, and pearl cosmos of, uni of our universe. My journey began in sensations of sound, water, and above all air. Our journey is a collection of beauty and ashes. Our journey is one where every voice and gift is needed. Our journey begins again and again, our journey is full of joy, love. That is a beautiful. <laughs> if everyone can snap, snap it up from home, snap it up for yourselves. Um, thank you. That is really beautiful. Um, so we're going to type this up, um, and it most likely be available tomorrow, and we'll we'll post it um, and share it. You can find it on our Facebook um, and probably on our website also. Thank you, everyone. Um, and people are reacting now saying, absolutely beautiful, love it, gorgeous. 
Yeah, continue to, um, although we're done with the poem, continue to interact with each other um, in the comments. I feel like it, it brings the, the human connection to these live events. Um, yeah, thank you, everybody. Hi, Artwell. This is Principal Jeff McFarland from Parkway Northwest High School for Peace and Social Justice. We are so thankful, grateful, and appreciative of the relationship with Artwell and most importantly, the people. You guys light up our school. Um, from the first day when a couple artists came into our school, said, oh, there's some potential here, to when the pandemic hit and multiple artists, Lindo, Donnell, uh, Sonia, are encouraging, supporting, giving life and, and energy to our students and our school online. The impact has been amazing. We love you guys. Thank you so much, Jeff. We are so honored and grateful for our partnership and so glad it's a mutual joy with your students, your whole school community, your leadership. Heartfelt thanks. Now I have the distinct honor uh, and privilege to inter introduce a very special guest. Ibi Yinka Alau uh, was, uh, won an artist contest, an international artist contest in his beloved home country of Nigeria, uh, following which the uh, president of Nigeria named him as the arts ambassador from Nigeria to the United Nations. And as you experience Eby's spirit, you'll understand how when he got to the UN, then the general secretary of the UN said, we want you to be the arts ambassador for the entire United Nations. Eby just finished creating a hundred foot painting, hundred foot long, the largest painting in the world. You'll see a glimpse of it when you see him. I think one of my favorite paintings is a smaller painting. Uh, a self-portrait that has a hole because he says the heart, the heart and soul of an artist has to be large enough. The hole has to be large enough for the entire universe to come in and go out. Thank you so much, Evie. It's a joy and honor to have you here and be in friendship with you. Uh, many blessings and many thanks. Hello, my name is Ibi Yinka Alao, and I'm the Arts Ambassador for the United Nations. I want to wish Artwell a happy 20th anniversary. It's been wonderful getting to know this organization and the work that you do to build uh, peace uh, around the world and also to emphasize the healing arts and the spiritual understanding of art around the world. Uh, in my work as a peace negotiator, I use art as a river to water the human heart so that we may grow to know peace. As an artist, one of the pieces I use a lot during peace building effort is called True Miracles. I will now share with you uh, and hope it will help us all to shine a light on forgiveness as a transformative gift. So the particular piece that is called True Miracles is this, and just notice the oyster shell here with the oyster uh, shining a light through and the people floating here. So this piece is connected to the one behind me that is called grace and uh, so that's the story that captures the essence uh, of this and uh, the most extraordinary thing about an oyster is this that irritations get into its shell the oyster doesn't like the irritations but when it says that i cannot dispose of the irritation it chooses it to do the loveliest thing an oyster ever has the chance to make which is it makes a pearl that if there are irritations in our lives, there's only one prescription to make a pearl. It may have to be a pearl of patience with a lot of love poured into it, but in any case, always make a pearl, and it takes a lot of hope, faith, and love to do it. 
sometimes to understand anything about ourselves or about a divine being, all we have to do is to look at the oyster because when we do bad things, maybe God can destroy us all, but if he doesn't do that and forgives, all he's doing is making pearls out of us. Uh, of course, for the oyster, you know, irritations come in the form of dirt particles, which it doesn't like, but it doesn't waste its whole life trying to discard of it. It just keeps loving by pouring enzymes, and over time, these ugly dirt particles, they become such beautiful pearls. And if we can do this in our lives, we see that it helps us to appreciate that forgiveness because that's what the oyster does. Essentially, it forgives the ugly things that happens to it, even the things that hurt it, and it makes something beautiful out of it. And uh, so the story is related to that first piece and this particular uh, piece behind me, uh, which is called Grace. And essentially what I'm saying with that, especially with the sky, is that it's, uh, it's a little bit like the quilt, which is a famous artwork uh, even here in the United States, as we have it uh, back home in Nigeria. A quilt may be made up of different multicolored pieces of fabric. You see some of the colors we may like, some of it we may not like, some of it may be ugly to us, some of it may be beautiful. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what constitutes each individual part of the quilt. What matters is the whole quilt itself. So just like the story of the oyster, that it doesn't matter what ugly or beautiful things happen to us, it just matters that we shine the light, we tell the story by putting all these various parts of our lives together. And I think that that's one of the really beautiful things I have noticed in my conversations with Susan about the work of Artwell uh, around Philadelphia and the whole country, the whole world, uh, you know, in general. And uh, so that's the story that I have to share with you. Again, happy 20th anniversary. Uh, I hope that uh, the next 20 years bring a lot of wonderful blessings to you and everyone that benefits from Artwell. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Evie. And that is such a perfect way to enter this time of honoring our uh, amazing leaders tonight. Uh, each one of our uh, honorees has done deep work within and without and taken lots of irritation and made amazing pearls and spread their, um, and their beauty. So we enter this time of honoring Lataj Carter with the Artwell Youth Leader Award, Jennifer Templeton Simpson with the Mickey Young Artwell Leader Award, and Sydney Hargrove with the Visionary Leader Award. We are inspired by each of you and we hope you enjoy the art and creative performances also that we've chosen to share with you. Big thanks to Artwell for still hosting the awards and allowing us to congratulate our honorees and um, just connect with each other in a time where connecting with each other can prove to be difficult. Um, to know anything about Lataj, you have to understand that we both came from the same organization that um, took kids from all around the city um, and taught them like new ways to write or just gave them a space to write in general. And um, that that organization um, every year took us to an international slam competition, um, which me and Lataj were both competing for in 2017. But unfortunately, 2017 was the year that that, pro, that organization stopped holding programming. And um, it was a big deal to all of us who were involved in the organization because it was a part of our daily routines. Every Saturday we come and we sit down and we write with each other and we share our work with each other and just like admire each other and, you know, admire writing and the art and everything. So um, when it fell, it was very devastating to everyone who was a part of um, the organization and we all tried to get it back. We tried a lot of things. We had a lot of town halls. 
a lot of group chats, a lot of demands, a lot of plans, but nothing worked in the end. And our organization that was a home to us, a haven, if you will, um, it fell apart. And um, we were all sad and we were stagnant because of it. We stopped writing. We weren't poets. We weren't, we were regular teens. And the only person who kept writing despite all of this was Lataj. Um, and it was, it was an extremely difficult time to still be writing. It was, it was at a time where we were looking at colleges and um, trying to just make important decisions in our lives. And Lataj was writing on trolleys and buses at events on the way to other events. And it showed all of us why we began writing in the first place. Lataj honed his craft through the hardest time. And that is one of the biggest examples of his leadership. Lataj inspired us all to write again, me and my friends at least. <laughs> and um, it made us remember why we began writing in the first place. Lataj's leadership has taught me to always be yourself for yourself. Um, shake hands if you gotta shake hands. <laughs> and to focus on what is at the core. We were all shattered by our collective loss, but now we know that we are the organizations that serve us. They fall down and we can always choose to get back up. Thank you for being a great friend and leader amongst us. It's an honor to present you with the Student Leadership Award, Lataj. Greetings, my name is Jamal Parker and I'm honored to be here for Artwell's 20th annual award ceremony that is a long time to be in the game uh i just turned 24 so i know a thing or two about being in my 20s so congratulations artwell i'm also here on behalf of lataj carter a very talented young man who had the honor of mentoring at the philly youth poetry movement and he's also such an exemplar exemplary <laughs> sorry individual who has done so many things to transform the Philadelphia youth and arts community. Um, so here I am today to just dedicate a poem for you, Lataj. And I framed it after what our world can look like when there is a removal of Black death, when there is a removal of these systems that keep people of color basically at the bottom of the totem pole. Um, so that's why this dedication, this poem is called, There Is No Verdict because I envision a future in which the violence that is played upon our bodies doesn't exist anymore. In this world, the verdict for the officer reads guilty or there is no verdict because there is never a funeral. The boy's skin wasn't broken into. The girl wasn't slammed half naked on the grass. The woman drives home safely because here massacre is just folklore. Slave ships are missed like the Ark of Noah and no babies are be predestined to be cattle or casket. Parents do not weep at the news of their child's lynching in this world. We are not underneath any slave master. We are not descendants of Ham or Cain. The curse has been broken. The curse never existed. No such thing as shackles on a slave's ankle or a noose around a runaway's neck. Here, our age rivals biblical proportions. The streets are an endless flow of black children that rival the glow of the sun and the glow of God. Thank you so much. Again, I want to thank Artwell for bringing me out today. And Lataj, congratulations on receiving the Youth Leader Award. I know you're going to continue to make us all proud. And I wish everyone else an amazing rest of their evening at this event. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited. 
first off, before I start off with anything, I want to say thank you to Khadija and Jamal. I'm very and deeply honored by their speeches. I also want to thank various mentors. I also want to thank the, my girlfriend, the lady of my life. And I want to thank Artwell as well as Spanish Pie, Spanish Pie Production for making this possible during times such as these. And as Khadija said earlier, around 2017, 2018, PYPM was starting to dissolve. And around that time, I was looking for a space where not only could I express my poetry, but I could also have that in hand with my eagerness to volunteer and to help the community whatsoever. And that I found Artwell. Artwell gave me and many of my peers and fellow youth a space where we can express ourselves, but also use our expression expression as an agent of change, as a advocacy for the community and to make things better. And that is what I believe makes the arts so important and so impactful. The arts has taught me that expression is important, but expression is also relieving. Expression in itself is freedom. It's like a, a cage bird where the cage opens and finally the bird sings as loud as it wants and it's welcome from the world, into the world. And I believe stop it from impacting the youth of the whole world and from making the world a better place. Again, I wanna thank uh, Khadija and Jamal. Uh, I'm deeply honored by the speeches. I also want to, again, thank my mentors, thank the lady of my life, thank Artwell and Spanish Pie Productions. And personally, I wanna thank every teaching artist and artist who, who is using their art to make a difference in the world. Thank you again, everyone, and please enjoy the show. We honor Jennifer Simpson today with the Mickey Young Artwell Leadership Award by giving her a sculpture created by the late Joe Brenman, our beloved colleague and teaching artist. Joe received this very same leadership award in 2018, a year before he died. Like Jennifer, he was devoted to service and community. We are so grateful to have experienced his talents, wisdom, and humanity for nearly two decades. Joe touched thousands of lives through his murals and sculpture, through his teaching, and his strong and loving presence. There's a wonderful narrative about Joe on our website, about how he taught children art as though they were an art academy about the beautiful murals he brought to Al-Aqsa, Olney High School, Rhodes Elementary, and other places. I was blessed to teach alongside Joe for many years and saw the joy and respect that he brought to every interaction. We present one of his beautiful sculptures to you, Jennifer, and pass along some of his spirit. Jennifer, it's an honor to present you with Artwell's Mickey Young Leadership Award. We are grateful for your support for so many years as a former board member, creator of our Eco Arts Program, and head of our development committee. This beautiful sculpture created by Joe Brenman is our gift to you with thanks and love. Like Joe, you're a role model, someone who contributes to society with passion, guided by your values and vision. We admire your leadership and appreciate how much you helped us grow our programs through the years. And I'm grateful that your mother introduced you to us. We hope this gift connects you to Joe, who embodies the love and generosity that guides your life. And we hope it always connects you to us. Thank you. I'm so grateful to be with you all tonight to share in the celebration of Artwell. I'm also very humbled to be receiving an award once given to Joe Brenman. I'm grateful that I had the pleasure of serving alongside of Joe on the board for many years. And finally, I'm honored to be able to accept this award on behalf of my late mother, Josephine Templeton, who, as Kathy said, introduced me to Artwell 15 years ago. My mother, through Kathy Cohen, shared with me the tremendous work of what was back then known as the Arts and Spirituality Center. 
At the time, I was working as a social worker in a resident treatment facility for young adults who were struggling with mental health issues, most often related to their environments. These young women experienced violence and trauma in and outside of their homes. They often turned to substances or other negative behaviors to cope. At our facility, we would often help these individuals find success by removing the negative stressors and coping mechanisms. The individuals would return to their homes, but very often fall right back into the same old behaviors and patterns. This was obviously disheartening for those who were working with these individuals and devastating to the individuals and their families. When I met Artwell, I realized part of the problem. We were in the business of removing the negative, but without the emphasis on how to fill the void. Artwell, in contrast, is all about providing the positive, the tools needed to respond to life's challenges. I saw in Artwell the power of a piece of paper, pen, and guidance from a teaching artist. I saw in Artwell programs individuals restore growth in their life after only 12 weeks of one session per week classes. I saw how arts put the power back into young people's hands, provided voices to the quiet, and the ability to break cycles in life that keep us running in the same exhausting patterns. And most importantly, I saw that the impact would be sustainable. The skills learned in Artwell's programs are fully transportable. These skills once learned continue to evolve, grow, and strengthen, ready to take on the next challenges in life. The individuals who learn these skills, like Lataj, who we heard from tonight in Artwell's programs, not only have their personal arsenal of tools that will help them to live up to life's challenges, but they can turn around and teach others. I imagine that all of us here tonight can appreciate how the arts can be transformative and at times life-saving. I am so grateful that Artwell has continued to not only survive, but to thrive through so many challenges in the past 20 years. I am so grateful to how Artwell has touched my life, but more importantly, changed the lives of so many students, teaching artists, and all of those around them. I'm so happy to celebrate Artwell's 20 years and be here with you all tonight. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, Cindy Hargra is a social impact strategist philanthropy advisor and speaker who is committed to building a future without racism and oppression through philanthropy. Sydney believes in embracing the voice, leadership, and decision-making of lived experience is essential to true and sustainable progress. Sydney leads the Social Philanthropy Network of Greater Philadelphia and is also a lecturer in the School of Social Policy and Practice at the University of Pennsylvania, teaching equity-informed social impact measurement. Previously, he led the Community Foundation of South Jersey, a startup foundation which grew from $400,000 to over $21 million in, in assets in just seven years. Prior to that, he served as a senior officer at the Columbus Foundation, the nation's seventh largest community foundation. Sydney serves on several regional and national boards and earned a master's of science degree in mechanical engineering, the Ohio State University, master of divinity degree from United Theological Seminary and a bachelor of science degree in mechanical engineering, summa cum laude, from North Carolina a and State University. So clearly, Sydney uses both sides of his brain. He is also an accomplished visual artist. In fact, you're gonna check out a couple of his images when he comes on camera. I met Sydney shortly after he joined the Philanthropy Network in 2017. During one of his first public appearances in his role there, Sydney gave a powerful speech about diversity, equity, and inclusion in our society and philanthropy's role in it. During the speech, he said the road that got us here cannot be the path we take going forward. And then he showed an image of someone holding a sign that said, my arms are tired from holding this sign up since the 70s. And that's when I realized hmm, he's a different kind of leader and I'm grateful to be in community with him. It is my honor to not only celebrate Artwell's 20th anniversary, 
but to also perform and present um, to Sydney Hargrove the 2020 Artwell Awards for Visual uh, for Visionary Leadership. And so I am grateful to sing this following song, um, which uses the words of Ella Baker, who is a civil rights giant, a civil rights civil rights giant, who um, is really just now starting to get her due. The song was written by Bernice Reagan of Sweet Honey and the Rock, and it is actually my arrangement. It is simply entitled Ella Song. Ooh, we who believe in freedom cannot rest. No. I said we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes, until the killing of black men, black mothers is as important as the killing of white men. Congratulations, Sydney, and to you, Artwell. Wow, Val Gay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your introduction, your spirit, and your gifts. What a surprise. To Artwell founder and executive director, Susan Teagan, Artwell board members, co-honorees, Jennifer Templeton Simpson and Lataj Carter. Congratulations and to the attendees this evening. Good evening. To my family, Lisa, Jesse, and Jada, I want to thank you for your tireless support as well. Thank you for this awesome award and recognition. I'm humbled to, and deeply honored and excited to receive it and to offer a few brief remarks. 
You know, when we are born, the world presents us with a set of narratives. There's storylines about who we are and imply the limits or limitlessness of our potential. We're handed these storylines, positive and negative, by the adults who surround us, the educators who teach us, the variety of media that feeds us the information that we have every day, the way products are marketed to us or not, the messages that we hear and see during our waking hours. These narratives become embedded into our consciousness and our subconscious minds as well. And fortunately for far too many black indigenous and youth of color of every gender identity, sexual orientation and ableness, they're given narratives that originate from centuries of systemic racism and oppression. I am so thankful for the people and organizations like Artwell that tell them the truth, that they have the power to create and affirm their own narrative that they don't have to conform to, to others' definitions of what is standard and what is good, that they have boundless opportunities for what they can become, and that they are created uniquely with gifts that they can bring to the table and unique ways of being and knowing. This is my story. As a young black male born in the South to parents who were married as teenagers, and believe it or not, they've been married for 70 years this year. There's no shortage of folk, there were no shortage of folks around on the ready to tell me what I could not become, what I could not do. In elementary school, in fact, I was given the narrative and the storyline of slow learner. And I was placed in a dimly lit room with a few others, given a set of headphones and given practice exercises in reading and math. Periodically, they check on me and the, few, and the others in the room. There are only a few of us. And I didn't have the courage to tell them that I was bored out of my mind. Instead, after a while, I actually started to believe that narrative. But then something happened. In middle school and high school, I came across a few black teachers for the first time who looked into my eyes and deep into my soul. And they saw the, a different set of possibilities. They challenged me and they made sure that I was not bored all day. By my senior year in high school, they told me that I could become a design engineer because of my diverse interest in art, math, and creativity. You know what I did? I laughed at them for three years that I followed their guide. In many ways, becoming an engineer was an exercise in proving them wrong. Changing careers to philanthropy enabled me to be, make sure that other children, youth, and families got the same opportunity. So this evening, I have come full circle. For 20 years, Artwell has been in the business of believing in youth believing in young people until they can believe in, their, in themselves, inspiring them to use their curiosity and creativity to create a collective future. Artwell, I thank you for this award and thank you for your vision to awaken the creativity and spirit of young people and to foster a thriving, just, and peaceful community. Thank you all. Oh no, the first mute of the night. I'm so sorry I was muted. We're gonna bring all of our honorees back on stage. Um, and they're gonna be with their awards. Um, and I'm gonna invite everyone at home to either uh, put in the comments, congratulations, clapping emojis, but we're gonna give it up for Jennifer Simpson. Woo, 
Signe Hargrove, and Latage. <laughs> Until a change occurs Take it apart Then reassemble Making some art Out of a world That could be breaking my heart But I don't choose to let it Yo, who selects The true perspective I keep the clues connected Like a gumshoe detective I see the future Like a blueprint I feel the movement Within this universe City, I'm a student Learning to use my language To my advantage Instead of doing damage I'ma make the anguish vanish Negative mind states I banish And if you understand it My rhymes are like a sandwich For the famished The nutrition New visions From a music Position, who's spitting the opposite of superstition so when you listen the pleasure relieve your pressure is very treasure i plan to see this there forever i paint with words strange and absurd i paint with words until a change occurs of every profound vocabulary I carry around a library of sound take it to various towns on stage I'm taking barriers and tearing them down abolishing ignorance like scholarships to colleges with knowledge that's sure to open minds like neurologists keep up by speaking deep word paintings abstract rhyme scheme dream interpretations a large abundance of funk that's loud as trumpets and drum kits but deep as dungeons you need a compass to navigate just gravitate to what fascinates and you'll get the picture like a Saturday matinee my favorite sensation is curiosity, the lack of it causes separation like apostrophes. So follow these word odysseys, stretching out your knowledge and philosophies with no apologies. I, 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 I paint with words, words, strange, 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 strange and absurd. Until a change occurs, I paint, 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 paint with words, strange, strange and absurd. All right, thank you so much. I'm back again and glad to be joined by Lyrispec Wade for a call to action at tonight's celebration. As you can see, Artwell has made life-changing impact in the lives of so many young people for 20 years. And now you get to uh, launch them even higher into the next 20 years. How can you do that? Well, we have this thing called Text and Give, this opportunity for you to support the work of Artwell. And I'll walk you through it quickly before we move on to the Lyrispec. So what you need to do is go to your text messaging app on your phone, create a new text message, and beside the word to, type 44321. It's also on the screen there for you. Type 44321. And in the message, type Artwell. It's not case sensitive and send. Uh, you will receive a message and an opportunity to donate at any level you'd like. That's text the word Artwell to the number 44321. And while you're doing that, uh, we're going to watch the donations roll in, and we're going to be uh, uh, have the opportunity to hear Lyrispect, Nord award-winning lyricist, author, and educator, and my co-partner here with the call to action. Lyrispect. Hi. Good evening. Thank you, Sydney, and congratulations again. The arts greatly changed the trajectory of my life, and quite possibly saved it. 
For those of you who may not know, my name is Nina Elizabeth Ball, known to many as Lear Respect. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm a theater graduate of Baltimore School for the Arts and a film and African-American studies graduate of Temple University. My work in the arts has taken me across continents, cultures, velvet ropes, and red tape. And because the arts found me early on in life, it greatly informed the direction of my life now. And I can proudly say that I am and have been a professional writer, author, creative, educator, producer, curator, uh, activist for more than 20 years. Everything about my life involves the arts. Did you know that out of 218 Philadelphia public schools, 44 schools in Philadelphia school district are without a single arts teacher? and 193 schools are without a music teacher. Furthermore, two thirds of schools with an art teacher do not have a budget for supplies. Uh, you know, art runs deeply through my veins, but even if it's not the thing that runs deep in the veins of your child, it can make all the difference in improving focus, challenging the brain, creating an outlet for their energy, ideas, and creativity, making them less rigid, more open-minded, and more likely to speak up for themselves and others in the face of adversity and opportunity. Um, you know, art is therapeutic and collaborative and freeing. It's the vehicle of the imagination. So let's use it to transport us into a brave new world. Without further ado, I'd like to share a piece that I wrote especially for tonight's purpose. And as we meditate on the words, let us reach deep in our pockets and our hearts uh, to make sure that every child is afforded an opportunity to have access to the arts. <clears throat> All right. These classrooms are sacred where dreams are awakened, a ritual rites of passage, discipline, restoration, they are sanctuaries of innovation, devotion and invocation as an essential means for awakened dreams and a lasting route to liberation. Watch art well work. There's an art to growing leaders. We the poets, painters and teachers can master the peace in 38,000 heartbeats in surround sound speakers. The percussion of the drum, the texture of a painting, the emotional music and cadence of murals and mosaics, the rhythm of Arenga, the mantras and meditation, the healing harmonies that linger, young hearts hum its praises, rooted in transformation. From heads down to hands up, no one is looking for a handout, but a fair and equitable start, engaging the human right to have access to art. We can acknowledge trauma and consider it an approach without limiting students or pathologizing their scope. Studies show that art students change, bar change barriers into opportunities and persist in finishing difficult tasks without losing hope. Help them find their space in a world where they are othered, bullied, and feel out of place. A place to explore without judgment, to take risks without criticism, but constructive feedback. A place to dream big without being laughed at. A space to unfold without being told that you can be anything you dream, but not that. A place to walk the inner and outer journey with amnesty, to find their path and claim their glory. How do you change the world? One child at a time. A young mind offered consistent access to sunshine, a sturdy vine out of the darkness, a chance to plant seeds and live, to see them harvest, to watch a child blossom from scattered skepticism to curiosity to engagement, then understanding to self-discovery and gifts evolving into purpose. The nuances of facial expressions and aha moments that make it all worth it the carryover hope that spills into communities, exemplifying instead of just preaching unity. It's time to invest in the world we want to see. Beyond blood ties, a new type of legacy, whole and healed humans afforded personal epiphanies. Potential fully realized, a, a legitimate lifeline, an underground railroad to break free from the school to prison pipeline. Children deserve to be handled warmly and with love. Our work is rooted in love. Good things happen in Philadelphia and the teachers gain as much as the students, knowing that a myriad of voices are stronger in a movement. Each torch lights the next, producing a beautiful butterfly effect. A child's imagination is uncharted territory. Arts open the 
the world to those who have yet to see their whole of their city. It fights insularity, teaching them to think critically, to take up more space physically, designing new destinies and vibrant imagery with density and complexity. If we do not have art, what will it mean to be alive? What will we do beyond basic function? Where will the laughter, frustration, joy, and tears reside? Something to look forward to and to look back on with pride, fueling futures in a changing tide. Improved outcomes in school focus, engagement, and comprehension, which greatly reduces the great the rate of attrition, which means we are graduating students whose futures were pending. We can hand them the tools to write a new ending. What we do in these classrooms is sacred. Each day, a devotion, a discovery, a new dream awakened, a restoration of hope when we go that extra mile. What fruit humanity reaps when we introduce the arts to a child. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Lyris Fed. So powerful. Fueling futures and changing tides. I will carry that with me beyond tonight. So don't forget, you're still giving. If your uh, company matches donations, send them a note and let them know that you supported Art Well tonight. And now let's celebrate. Let's celebrate with a big reveal. With your help, Artwell has raised. Looks like $136,775. Yeah. Thank you so much for this wonderful boost to awaken dreams of our youth. Don't go away yet. We have a message from our Art World Board. Hi there. It's my honor to begin the close of our event by channeling our values and sharing our appreciation for everyone who makes Art Well and events like this one possible. Let's pump up the spirituality and love as we celebrate our amazing honorees, Sydney, Jennifer, and Lataj and to our many generous corporate and foundation sponsors and partners. Tonight, we raise our thanks to our change makers, Sam 103 Foundation, our benefactors, Kathy and David Cohen, Will Sashe and Carolyn Hazard, Arthur and Julia Somson, Jennifer Templeton Simpson and Scott Simpson, and our event ambassadors, GNA Foundation, GlaxoSmithKline, Glenn Mead, Elizabeth Kruger and John Seeley and Wells Fargo. Thank you for your support of Artwell tonight and over the past 20 years. We also thank the amazing Spinach Pie Production Company for their amazing support of this virtual event this evening. Thank you. I was the number one, number two, Brianna. <laughs> Good evening. We celebrate and extend our gratitude to our amazing students, school administrators, and teaching artists who pump up imagination and healing every day when they receive and deliver our creative programs. To our dedicated and amazing Art World staff, Susan, Brianna, Jessica, Dan, and Marcos, and our wonderful committed board who work very every day to elevate our mission. Thank you. And finally, we celebrate and pump up our beloved Art Wall community that you are all a part of this evening and that has been going strong for 20 glorious years. In the face of so many challenges, we remain committed to creating a culture with space for creativity, play, joy, and collaboration with the power to disrupt injustice in our society. We catalyze social change by affirming identities and promoting equality and belonging. Our work is anchored in our love and commitment to our city and to our world. We hope that you will cherish these values and hold them dearly in your heart this evening and whenever you think of Artwell's mission. Thank you and good night, but don't leave yet.
there's still more to come. Wow, we are here. This is the finale. I am so excited. Y'all, I'm feeling so full of all the love, all the energy that has been projected through the streams tonight. Yo, just shout out to like Artwell for 20 years, yo. Hold up. Let me get my little company. Hold up. 20 years of Artwell. Yes, yes, yes. We are here. We are here. Yes, my name is Donnell Powell. Most people know me by D, and I'm just excited um, to be closing it out with some people that I love, that I love sharing space with. I'm a teaching artist at Parkway Northwest, which is a deep well site. I teach that with some wonderful artists, um, Sonia, Lindo, and Enoch. And I'm just excited to bring together that so many people came together to honor Artwell on their 20th anniversary yo we have tas yo we have partners from past and present we have board members we have the staff shout out to the staff shout out to all the hard work that the staff has been committing to keeping art well going i like to say keeping that well going we're gonna keep that well going yes 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 um i don't know i just love i think during this time like i i i just need as much like joy and energy and uh, we're just gonna close it out on a good note. Um, one second real quick, and here we go. So, oh, well, um, one of the practices that I really enjoy learning from a lot of my fellow art world teaching artists is this practice of just like breathing. So I invite everybody um, on this Zoom call to please just join me um, and you do that by just making sure yourself is grounded. So but we do that by making sure our feet are planted. Maybe our hands are on our knees and we're sitting up. Yes, I can see. I love green screen. Shout out to our tech. Yo, I feel like our stage manager never get like props. Just shout out to everybody that's working on the tech right now. Yes, I see y'all. I see y'all. There we go. Here we go. So I just want to invite everybody to breathe in with me. Just breathe. So our first breath, we're going to uh, attribute that to imagination. So on three, let's breathe in imagination. One, two, three, breathe in. Breathe out imagination. Beautiful, beautiful. Let this second one be about healing, yo. 2020 has been a lot, yo. But we still here on November, what? It is the 12th, partying up in 2020. Yo, let's just bring love to healing. So let's give a breath to healing on three. One, two, three. Breathe out. Third one, third one. You know, there's just been some trying times this year, you know, but you know, I think we're on to a bright future. And one of my favorite art world values, core values is social justice. So while we breathe in, I'm gonna invite everybody on the call. So just raise your right hand, that right fist actually, raise the right fist in the air. And on this breath, we are gonna shout this breath out to social justice. So on three, we gonna breathe in social justice on three. One, two, three. Let it out. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Here we go. Speaking of Ashe, we're going to dedicate this one to the ancestors, y'all. The ancestors. If y'all haven't got hip to the game yet, I'm going through all of the core values. There are six in here. It's number four, spirituality. Let's breathe in on three. One, two, three. Breathe love to our ancestors. Out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We just keeping it moving. OMG, like Artwell is, yo, I work for so many different art spaces in the city, yo. But like Artwell, yo, when I tell you, it's one of the, like one of the few organizations really doing that work in terms of like bringing a diverse, a real truly diverse in every sense of the word diverse community together. I shout out everybody who's who put that work in to make this space what it is. So our fifth value is community. Let's breathe, breathe in on three for community. One, two, three. Let it out, let it out. Yes, yes, we are on the sixth and last, but this one is not the least though. We are on the sixth and last core value. And I wanna like just shout this moment out to like one of like, 
a, a, a person that I've got to know and meet through our world. And every time I'm in the presence of this human, I just like get this sense of just like true love. And um, Miss Marcy just like showed me this like dope like thing about just like loving yourself. So I'm gonna invite everybody to just put your right hand in the air. Put your left arm in the air. Swing your right arm, swing it y'all. We gotta swing it, swing it across your chest. Take that left one and swing it across that chest. And just love on yourself for a little while. Just love on yourself for a little while. Yes, yes, yes. This is love. I love our well. Oh my God, 20 years. Let's just like shout out. Let's, I wish I had something to toast with. Let's just like toast the 20 more years. Get something, I don't know, invisible glasses. Let's toast the 20 more years. 20 more years to Artwell keeping that will turning for all the youth of Philadelphia. Because like Lyra Speck said in the poem, yo, good things happen in Philadelphia, yeah, I mean? Yes, yes, here we go, here we go. Um, I just wanna thank everybody, yo, for being here. And one of my, one of my like exit, like one of the things I mandate to my students before they can leave any of our workshops is that you just have to come off your camera or you just have to unmute yourself and just like spread love and just say bye. It's just something about hearing the voices of people saying bye and waving and like just celebrating. Um, so yeah, y'all, I appreciate y'all. Be well. And oh, 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 I see y'all checked out the feng shui in the background with all the plants and stuff. Yo, this is my money tree. Don't forget, I got to do the plug. Come on, this is a fundraiser. Come on, Money Tree, let's keep it going so we can keep this going. Peace. I will take a little trip over yonder, over yonder, so I can take a look around at what you've seen. I can see from where I am you're on an adventure In a place you can't describe Some things can't be captured in words So show me colors, colors I need Pictures this time Show me food and sights and sounds I wanna know what you find I want colors, colors please show me Life ain't black and white Let me see you on the other side of the line Show me colors Ooh -hoo -hoo. Show me colors Ooh -hoo -hoo. Since you've been away the days grow longer Days grow longer and I I can't wait to see your smiling face Even if it's just online It brings me something I can't define Some things can't be captured in words So show me colors, colors I need Pictures this time Show me food and sights and sounds I wanna know what you find I want colors, colors please show me life ain't black and white let me see you on the other side of the line swirling round and round in my head more than all the pages I've read dancing on the memories playing in my mind when I think about it I wonder what it would be like packing bags and wondering if I was by your side so show me colors colors I need pictures this time show me food and sights and sounds I wanna know what you find I want colors colors please show me life ain't black and white let me see you on the other side of the line Show me colors Ooh -hoo -hoo. Show me colors Ooh -hoo -hoo.
I will take a little trip over yonder, over yonder, so I can take a look around at what you've seen. I can see from where I am you're on an adventure In a place you can't describe Some things can't be captured in words So show me colors, colors I need Pictures that 